Welcome to the Centre for Christian Spirituality and thank you for joining us on this 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. We invite you now to listen to the scripture. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, If two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the only other time in the Gospel where the word church is mentioned. And I I think it is um, a church text, in a way, if I can put it that way. That The early part of it is is Jewish, if reason with... um, the person that has sinned and then bring along a couple of witnesses, uh, that's normal. But I think the idea of taking it to the church is something that is um, sort of being emphasised here and the word church actually being used. And I think what follows about the giving of the power that has been given to Peter to all of the disciples is really giving it to the church. Mm -hmm. And in the context of sin, we can see here the the sacrament of reconciliation or the basis of it uh, emerging from here. Mm-hmm. And I think the, the real um, emphasis on the church is that there's, there's no um, Jesus without church and no church without Jesus. Mm-hmm. In other words, that when Jesus says, I will be with you, mm-hmm. uh, where two or three are gathered in my name, he's sort of saying that the, that the reason the church has a role is that it's the presence of Jesus, that the presence of the risen Lord um, in the world is a social one, not just an, an individual one. And the last words of Jesus, of Jesus in the Gospel, Behold, I will be with you all days. Oh, yes. yes. So I, I feel it's um, very much a statement about the church and its importance and that the role of the church, um, that... Um, it, the role that it has in, in helping people to become disciples of Jesus. Unfortunately, I think we live in an age where many are saying yes to Jesus, no to the church. Mm-hmm. And yet, really, you're not saying yes to Jesus if you say no to the church. Uh, mm. It's an interesting point, David, I mm. think, about when we're talking about the church in 2017, yeah. Yeah. because the, the dichotomy between when yeah. two or three are gathered... I am there, yeah. and I think there's about 1.2 billion Catholics right. worldwide. Yes. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's taken on yeah. enormous proportions. Yeah. But to keep it simple for me, I, I, I really resonated. Yeah. I felt quite, well, I don't know, touched by that last line because there are two or three of us gathered around this table. I that's thought, right. oh, that's yeah. beautiful. That's yeah. Right. So, yeah. And I, I think the thing that's difficult about our faith is that it's been, that all you can see is like the tip of the iceberg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, really, all that we do, uh, Jesus is working through us, but you never really yeah, yeah. see that. Yeah. And um, and that's where I think the divine presence is um, always there. Mm-hmm. But we, we don't realise it's happening. We don't yeah. live in uh, that reality. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the part, the point that came to me, that... Uh, the significance of the and the uh, the importance of the community, and uh, oh. and community is church. Yes. So you, you, a sense as you're saying, David, Virginia, you, uh-huh. you can't have one without the other. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's it's all about Jesus. Yes. In, in that sense, and we're yes. caught up in in that incredible mystery. Yeah. Bonhoeffer is a great is one who emphasises Jesus and community very much, and he has a saying that says. The one who cannot be in community cannot be alone. And the one who cannot be alone cannot Cannot be in community. community. In other words, there's that double aspect Mm. of being a disciple of Jesus. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. And that's a bit of a challenge for us, I think, today, isn't it? It is. Where individualism seems to be uh, Mm. um, rearing its ugly head, as it were. Um, And community seems to be 
time. Distant from it. And it's part of the of the time, the postmodernity. Yeah. It's not only institutions which are, the, are under attack, but yeah. the notion of community yeah. as well. Mm. Well, we invite you now to consider uh, what uh, struck you about that scripture. We invite you now to listen to the scripture read a second time. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Well, consider a practical application on hearing that scripture. Mm. I think my practical application coming through is this sense of um, really those opportunities to gather. You know, when yes. in our community we have Monday prayer, we have Wednesday mass, we have um, now the rosary on Friday, just to take that opportunity and gather, gather with others. Yes, my thought was to focus more on the presence of the Lord in my life. I mean, that's mm. a traditional um, Christian practice to become more aware of the Lord during the light, during one's mm. life. And, uh, you know, there are things that are laid down that can help. So I thought I would focus on that. Mm. I'd just like to take up the community thing. Um, when you spend a lot of time alone and you come then into the, the presence of others so that you're in this sense of communion with them, there is a heightened, for me, a heightened appreciation for the ability to pray, uh, for the Eucharist, for whatever it is uh, in what I'm doing, that when I'm doing it with others, I feel so much more fulfilled mm. and, uh, in what I'm doing, challenged by, encouraged by, and able to move forward as a consequence of, of that uh, experience mm. of community. Mm -hmm. So I try to appreciate that incredible gift in my life. We invite you now to consider what's the pra practical application for you? We know that we cannot achieve any of these things on our own, but with God's help, we will be better able to um, be able to realise our good intentions. So we now take a moment to pray for the courage and wisdom to apply this to our lives. Thank you so much for joining us on our Lexio Reflection. We look forward to seeing you again next week. And now we will conclude with the opening prayer from today's liturgy. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance through Christ our Lord.